find some big unions, some indexed unions. So we're letting a i, a sub i, be a doubleton. It's got two elements in it, negative i and positive i. So just as an example, what would a sub pi be equal to? a sub pi would be equal to negative pi comma pi. So I said doubletons, although technically a sub zero would be a singleton, singleton zero, right? But now let's look at these problems and see what we're going to get. So on the left it says find the union of all the AIs. So if we write out a few of these sets, I wrote out one example with the pi, but now we're indexing over natural numbers. This is understood to mean one, two, three, four, much like sigma notation. So a one would be the set containing one and negative one. Set a two would be the set containing two and negative two. I should be writing these probably the other way around because I put negative on the left, but um, it doesn't really matter. These are non-ordered. Dot, 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 dot. And so what's going to happen as we union all of these up? So we're certainly going to have one, two, three, four, continuing on forever. But we'll also have negative one, negative two, negative three, those numbers also continuing on forever. So as we extend out to infinity, go as far as we can, what numbers are we going to end up getting? Well, you're going to get almost all of z, right? z is almost completely in there, all of the integers and all of the negative integers, but not the number 0. So the correct answer to this is z, the integers, minus by 0, not including 0. Okay, how about the intersection? The intersection is even easier, it turns out. We already wrote out two of the sets over here, remember? A1 and A2. What numbers do those sets have in common? Well, 1 and negative 1 are in the top one, 2 and negative 2 are in the bottom one. There is nothing in common. So we don't even need to look at the other ones. The first two sets don't even have anything in common. So the answer here is going to be a null set. There is nothing in common when you intersect all of these sets down. So, why don't you pause the video and try one here on your own. I have here the a sub i's being the closed intervals from negative i to i. So pause the video and see if you can find these unions and intersections. Okay, to begin with, I'm going to do one example up here so we can kind of see what it looks like. a sub pi would be the interval from negative pi to pi, or the set of x such that negative pi is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to pi. Now that negative pi is a little bit unclear. Here we go, negative pi. Okay, so come over here again and let's kind of approach it the same way we did last time. We're now indexing over natural numbers, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So a sub 1 is equal to the closed interval from negative 1 to 1. Now the order is important because we want to start at the lower number and end at the higher number. So negative 1 to 1 a sub 2 is going to look like the closed interval from negative 2 to 2 and that goes on and on and on so what's happening here is it looks like we're going from negative 1 to 1 and then negative 2 to 2 and then dot 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 and dot 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 so these intervals are constantly expanding right they're going to get larger and larger and larger so if you union them all up all the ways you go off towards infinity we're actually going to capture every single number eventually so this is going to be equal to r all of the numbers from negative infinity all the way up to positive infinity okay on the other hand if we look at the right hand side we're looking for an intersection what's the intersection of all of these sets so again, just looking at the first two sets, we can see that these are what we would call maybe nested intervals. The negative 1, 1 is inside the smallest part of it, but then all the other ones expand outward. So intersection means it has to be in all of them. Negative 1, 1 is embedded in each one of them. So the answer to this problem is actually just going to be simply that first interval, the one that goes from negative 1 to 1, because it's inside of every single one of the sets and it's the only part that is inside of all of the sets.